This is a short video to help my students revise for part one of Elizabethan England, part of the AQA spec. And what I'm going to focus on for this short video is the Essex Rebellion, which is a very, very common uh, event to come up. It could come up as an importance question, uh, as an account question, or as an interpretation question. In whatever format that it comes up, it is really important to know the causes and the consequences of the rebellion. The Essex Rebellion stands alone from the Catholic plots that you will look at elsewhere in the topic. So the Northern Rebellion, the Rodolphi plot, the Throckmorton plot, the Babington plot are not really connected with uh, the Essex Rebellion that happens in 1601 when Elizabeth is older, she's quite frail and a lot of her trusted ministers and allies by this point have passed away or they have retired. In some respects Essex can be seen as seizing his opportunity to take power. Let's just remind ourselves that Essex was born Robert Devereux. He was the stepson of Robert Dudley. Dudley was probably the closest to a suitor for marriage that Elizabeth had. So it was always likely that Elizabeth would look upon Devereux favorably. He was therefore given the title of the Earl of Essex. And we're now gonna remind ourselves of some of the causes of the rebellion. So there was a strong faction within the Privy Council. Essex had developed a rivalry with Robert Cecil, the son of the Lord Treasurer William Cecil. Some historians believe that Essex's jealousy of Cecil was an obsession. In 1596, Essex had successfully attacked the Spanish port of Cardiz. He had become one of the Queen's favourites, but soon fell out with the Queen, turning his back on her at one point, resulting in the Queen hitting him on the side of the head. In 1599, the Queen sent Essex to suppress a rebellion in Ireland. He made a truce with the Earl of Tyrone against the Queen's orders. As a result, she took away his sweet wine monopoly, which lost him his wealth and influence. When challenging the Queen on her decision, Essex rushed into the Queen's chambers and caught her without her wig. Essex was broke, humiliated, and felt he had nothing else to lose. He began to gather his supporters and plot a rebellion against the Queen. So how did Essex try to orchestrate this rebellion? Essex was too proud to accept his punishment and instead took measures to try and seize power. He gained around 200 supporters. One of his allies included the Duke of Southampton, another noble who was out of favour and heavily in debt. Another reason why we might separate religion as being a cause of the Essex Rebellion is that actually key Catholics and Puritans joined him with former soldiers who were impressed by his military skills. Another aim of the rebellion was that Essex wanted to get rid of the influence of Cecil at court and to make Elizabeth declare James VI of Scotland, who was later to become James I of England, as her successor. The rebellion failed as the Privy Council heard of the impending attack and offered to be merciful to those who had initially supported Essex as long as they deserted him. They were indeed merciful because many of Essex's supporters got away with fines. Some, including Essex himself, were executed. So why is the Essex Rebellion so important and what were the consequences? Now to encourage that high level thinking and what we call a second order concept change over time, we might benefit from breaking these consequences down into short term and long term. So for short term, Essex was put on trial for treason and sentenced to death. He agreed to name some other rebels, including his own sister Penelope. He was executed on private grounds on the 25th of February, 1601. Elizabeth was old by this time and many of the ministers that had served her throughout her reign were dead. However, it showed that her government was still strong enough to fight off a rebellion. So we look at the long-term consequences. The failure of yet another rebellion showed many dissenters of the monarchy that rebellion could be futile and that disputes should be aired in Parliament. Over the next 40 years, Parliament would gain more power, eventually overthrowing King Charles in 1649. Under Elizabeth, it had met only 13 times in 45 years of her reign. The Essex faction had all but disappeared, whilst the Cecil faction remained under Elizabeth's successor to the throne, James I. Two Cecil descendants even went on to become Prime Minister in later centuries. The patronage system had to be reassessed due to the conflict that it had caused. 
So lots of important information there, whether you are answering the interpretation question, the importance question, or the account question. I hope this video has been of some help to you. If it has, please do give it a like and subscribe to my channel and good luck in your upcoming exams.